namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa namo dasa bhagavato arahato samma sambodasa namo dasa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodasa. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> we have a three type of Sankara. <coughs> So last week we talk about this one. According to Vipanga Soda, um, a very important soda for Dibana originations. Uh, we have a three type of Sankara. Okay. We have a three type of Sankara. The bodily volition and formation. Orally, volitional activities motivated by ignorance and craving. And also we have a vave volitional formation. So these activities, vave activities are motivated by ignorance and craving. Then the mente volitional formation. So we have a three type of uh, sankara. sankara. So if we look at here, I think we have to we have to take note that uh, motivated by ignorance and craving. That's very important part. <coughs> so according according to uh, uh, this order, not every activity is sankara. Only they are motivated by ignorance and craving. <coughs> In other soda, uh, sankaras are mentioned in different way. Uh, in the three type of sankara, three type of sankara. Number one, meritorious volitional formations, ponyabi sankara. Meritorious, it is good volitional formation, but it is motivated by ignorance. And craving. In that soda, the Buddha said that because if a person immersed in ignorance generates a meritorious volitional formation, consciousness fair on to the meritorious realms. So in that soda, so that means if you do dana, if you observe sila, if you meditate, motivated by ignorance and craving. <coughs> so that is called meritorious volitional formations. It is good, but your motivation, motivation to do dana, observe sila, to do meditation, is motivated by craving, especially craving. So that craving arises because of igno ignorance, awaja. Some people do dana because they want to be popular. They want to be famous, yeah? Some people may observe sila because they want to have a good rebound. Craving, you know, craving. Some do meditation. Some, some some might go to um, meditation retreat because they want to uh, attain, you know, blissful state or jhana. These are craving, you know, very high, very good. But your activities is motivated by ignorance and uh, craving. So such good deed is called sankara, onyabi sankara. It is good, it's good but motivated by craving and ignorance. So here also remember that the Buddha and Arahan, especially the Buddha and Arahan, they do something, they think that 
they should do. By doing those things, it will be beneficial for many people. That is called Kriya Chaita. Motivated by Kriya Chaita. I think that is very, whether the result is good or bad, it will not bring any suffering in their mind. Sometimes we do good things uh, uh, with the well, with the Kriya Chaita, with the wisdom, you know. The opposite of ignorance, uh, opposite of ignorance is wisdom. Something sometimes we do good deed with the wisdom. So as our activities is based on wisdom, there's no craving, there's no expectation in return. Then you think that you should do this. Because of that you do it. Whether the result is good or bad, it doesn't matter. It will not hurt. It will not Ham your mind. No? It is a very, it's very profound one. Very profound. So even though it is meritorious, sankara, but it is not good. It's connected with the sankara, sansara, right? Sansara. <coughs> so actually, uh, according to Abhidharma. Meritorious volitional formations is the volition or chaitanya in the eight great wholesome chaitas and also in the five wholesome, five material jhana chaitas. The volition in the wholesome chaitas. Here, wholesome chaitas mean two, eight great wholesome chaitas, and the five wholesome, five material jhana chaitas. So when you do Dana Sila Bhavana with the eight great Hosan Chaitas, when you attain, when you want to attain Jhana uh, with the five Hosan, five material Jhana Chaitas, if you have, if such a one Hosan meritorious deed is motivated by ignorance and craving, so that is called meritorious volitional formations. Is good, but it's not one hundred percent good, right? Second one. Any question for the first one? No. Second one, demeritorious volitional formations. Aponyabi sankara. So demeritorious and wholesome. Sometimes we call it unwholesome. Volition formations. So in the Soda, the Buddha said that if he generates a demeritorious volition of formations, if someone do a wholesome, a wholesome deed, consciousness fails on to the demeritorious, demeritorious, uh, a wholesome realm. So if you do a wholesome, Ahosan did. So consciousness will fail on to the Ahosan destinations. So actually, this is a not very, not, not good. Akusala. Aponya or Akusala. <coughs> so according to Abhidha Imam, that is a, the motivation, uh, volition, Chaitana, in the Tre Ahosan Chaitas. Tre Ahosan Chaitas. So if you do with the volition, uh, the tre hos and hosan chaitas, so you are, your consciousness will condition to go to hosan destinations, hosan destinations. That is called demeritorious volition formations. Okay. Next one. Impart up the volition of formations. Anincha bit sankar. Impart up the or in and shake up the volition of formations. So in the soda, the Buddha said that motivated by ignorance, you know, imagine ignorance if he generates in part up the volition of formation consciousness. Fair zone to the impartable. 
So if you do such a kind of activity, so which are impartable or unshakable, so your consciousness will fail to the impartable realms. So here, according to Abhidharma, is the volitions in the four wholesome immaterial jhana chaitas, they are called impartable volitional formations. So they are called impartable. The reason is uh, they are very far away from hindrances. We will fight hindrances. So they don't have a desire for sensual pleasures. They don't have a uh, awit. They don't have a breathlessness and uh, remorse. And they don't have a uh, uh, sloth and torpor. They don't have a uh, doubt. So they don't, they don't have a, uh, they are free from hindrances. For that reason, it is called unshakable, unshakable. But according to the sotas, uh, according to some sotas, um, four rupa jhana, four rupa jhana, in Abhidhamma, five rupa jhana, right? Abhidhamma, five rupa jhana. And the first two immaterial jhana, are called impartable, impartable. So the reason is the moment you attain such spiritual attainment, your mind is unshaken, impartable, uh, how do you say, impartable. For that reason, if you attain such higher spiritual achievement, your consciousness will fail on to the impartable realm. But here, according to those sodas, Impartable by Ram me uh, Rupa Ram and the first two are Rupa Ram. But uh, the last two are Rupa Rams, they have their own name. Akin Chinya Yadana, Nivasinya Nasinya Yadana, like this. So this is according to some soda. And then you can forget about it. Just want to I just want to, you know, um how to say the this it's uh, distinguished from uh soda and abidam. But according to Abhidhamma, uh, impartable volition of formation me, the volitions in the four wholesome immaterial jhana chaitas. Because the moment you attain those chaitas, you don't have you are very far away from hindrances and wholesome mental state. For that reason, the moment you attain such uh, such a higher state, your mind is very stable. And shake up So I think uh, after learning all this one, uh, uh, Sankara me 29 wholesome and unwholesome chaitas, according to Abhidhamma, 12 unwholesome, and we have 8 great wholesome chaita, and we have 5 rupa kusala chaita, and 4 arupa kusala chaita, 29. So all these 29 are mundane chaita, not supra mundane one, mundane chaita. According to Abhidhamma, four Magha chaitas are also wholesome chaita. But here, uh, we are talking about the original suffering, the original suffering. For that, for that reason, uh, the volition in the four supra mundane path chaita, Lokodara Magha chaita. So these four chaitas are not included in the Sankara. So the reason is the moment you attain Lokodara Magha chaita, the moment you attain Magha chaita, the wisdom is pre predominant. Wisdom is governing at the time. So there is no place for ignorance. So wisdom is the opposite of ignorance. So that means the moment you attain four Magacheda, so there is no ignorance. So there is only uh, wisdom. For that reason, uh, four Magachedas 
cannot be taken by sankara, not sankara. So we have to understand this one. In other words, dependent origination explains how the suffering is originated. The Magacheta destroying the original suffering. Four Magacheta destroying craving in different degree. So for that reason, four Magachedas, even though they are wholesome Cheda, according to Vidyama, they are not taken as a Sankara. For that reason, uh, another one, another one is the Kriya Cheda, Fanchena Cheda. So the activities of the Buddha and Arahans are not regarded as a Sankara. Here, we are talking about Sankara me, bodily activities, bhava activities, and mental activities. But if we take it like this, how about the activities of the actions of the Buddha and Arahans? Is it uh, Sankara? It's not Sankara because the Buddha and Arahant, they already eradicated ignorance and craving. They don't have ignorance and craving. For that reason, as they do not have ignorance and craving, there's no Sankara. So that means their activities, their actions, whether with the body, speech, and mind, all their activities are not regarded as a Sankara. For that reason, we call it functional consciousness. Abhidhamma gave a very beautiful name, Kriya Cheda, functional consciousness. As Arahans, Pachika Bora, and the Bora do not have ignorance and craving, their activities are not consider as a karma or sankara so they are just uh, their their activities and their actions are called kriya kriya actually in sotas kriya and karma they have a similar meaning the same definition just doing doing something doing something but abhidharma trying to distinguish between two karma and kriya so actually, the Buddha, in the Soda, the Buddha sometimes say, uh, I am Kamawari and Kriyawari. Kamawari me, the do, uh, I mean the one who say Kama, who believe in Kama. Kriyawari, the same thing, the same meaning, but Abhidharma distinguish Kama and Kriya. Kama, the actions of normal people, Sotapana, Sakadagami, and Nagami. But Kriya, the actions of Arahan, Pichika Bodha, and the Bodha. So that is the definition. Actually, I am very often uh, explaining to the students if we do something, thinking that, thinking with the wisdom, we should do this. If I do this, it will be very, very, uh, very beneficial for, for the many people. Then you do it without any craving, without any expectations. Then because of that, whether the result is good or bad, it's okay, it's okay. No suffering, no suffering. That is, we are doing with the Kriya Chaita, right? Kriya Chaita. Okay, up to here, any question? Okay. Uh, please use microphone. Supra mundane. Yeah. The Maga Chitas are not considered Sankara because wisdom is not meet. But the Maga, sorry, the Maga Chitas um, that are four parts 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Only Yeah. So that is why you use the word pejorative, right? Because, um, because, um, I mean, um, even the moment Magacheta arise, wisdom, of course, is hundred percent. Wisdom arises. So I, I, as we have learned that, one uh. Only one mind moment arises at a time. So when Magacheta arises, wisdom, you know, wisdom predominant. If wisdom arises, there's no place for ignorance. In that sense, in that sense, wisdom is a hundred percent. My understanding is that because of the four stages of Actually, I think we have to understand in this way. Uh, when Maga Cheta arises, Maga Cheta, Maga Cheta, you know, the wisdom is Chetasika. Wisdom is not Cheta, wisdom is Chetasika. So when Maga Cheta arises, then wisdom or the faculty of wisdom, Chetasika, they arise together. So that means uh, the moment the wisdom exists, there is no place for ignorance. Ignorance, moha, moha also chedesika, moha do not associate with the magacheta. So that means at that point, at that point, the wisdom is predominant. So that means there is no ignorance at all. So we can we can say that one hundred percent wisdom at that moment, but of course after our uh, magacheta we have a two or three falacheta. Then after that, sotapanna, sotapanna forward to nome mind, nome mind. So at that time, when sotapanna sees something a beautiful things, yes. craving will arise again. Yes. Yeah. So. The moment Magacheta arises, you know? right. okay. So meaning that uh, the Sutta Pana does not have a certain wisdom. No, no, we cannot say that. We cannot say. It. Oh, yeah. the moment somebody becomes Sutta Pana, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. I think I have to rephrase what I want to say. Let me let me uh, let me make clear. The moment Magacheta arises at that moment, at that particular moment. Wisdom is predominant. So, Makacheta and Wisdom, Chedasika, they arise together. So, Makacheta do not associate with Moha. So, when you, when you learn association with the Cheta and Chedasika, I think you will clearly understand. So, for that reason, you know, studying Abhidharma will help us a lot, you know. To explain such a very set of cases, so the moment Maka Cheta arises, the wisdom, the faculty of wisdom Chedasika, arises together. So at that particular moment, ignorance, no ignorance. But uh, of course, after attaining Maka Cheta and Maka Fala Cheta, Sodapana became a normal 
uh, living in normal lay life, then sometimes he will have delusion, moha. And because of that, he will be craving. You know? If the delusion, moha, and craving arises, no wisdom, no wisdom. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what you're saying is that at the moment when the uh, person is meditating and is able to reach Maga Chitta, Maga Jana Chitta, he at that moment he has wisdom. He does not experience but he has wisdom at yeah. that moment. Yeah. But later when he falls back uh, to his normal life, yeah. Even if he's a Sotapana, yeah. he can still have greed, he will be eradicated. You are right. You are right. Mm. Okay, question. I'd like to this my father's evolution information. See, for example, a lay person, um, you get a meritorious thing like giving a dana or rope offering to mass or temple community. But occasionally we might observe people may not be happy at the end of the day because they do not be able to the one they desired, the monk that they desired, for example. Mm. So I would have heard that from the sutras, when you give a gift, it has to be before you give the gift, you are having a pleasant and happy mind. After you give the gifts, you are also a happy and happy state. So given the situation of the first scenario, where a person is generate a ill will dislike having not uh, getting what he wants in this uh, road uh, offering, can we say that the meritorious solution formation does not exist because the wholesome cheaters is not present? So the res you, mean, you mean the recipient is the, the, the donor. Yeah, the so donor. Mm. The to a monk, okay. Oh, yeah. Or he may have certain referring that his work is given to a high ranking officials and anything like I that. I see, I but see. But he didn't get that outcome. I see. So he generated his life, I was not happy. Mm, 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 mm. So for business. So he, he donated junior monks. Uh, like the, like the, the, the one you do, yes, you do not expect. To a junior monk that okay, okay. Mm. Not happy about. Oh, okay, okay. So Mm. Uh, you should be happy before you give the gifts. Okay. And you should be happy after you give the gifts. Yeah. So for this case, it is not. So <coughs> if it is not, uh, meritorious volition formation generates a big force and cheat us. But yeah. because he is having a dislike or ill will, yeah. this eight force and cheat us will not arise at the present moment, at that point in time. Am I correct? <laughs> many, <laughs> many. Uh, <laughs> I think it's very uh many 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 things to cover. The first the first thing is the yes in the soul does before you give when you are giving, then after you give you must be happy. Actually to have such happiness not easy. You must have a wisdom. No? Sometime out of ignorance you might do wholesome things. Later you regret, right? Because before you do good deed, no wisdom, no wisdom. But in your case, uh, you went to offer senior monks, but he, he's not there, right? He's not there. He's not there. Or not happy for that. He's and not there or that. The general practice, uh, the Sankar community will just distribute on his behalf. Oh, yeah. So mm. he did not get to Oh yeah, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I think that is. We have to uh, use our wisdom. So wisdom very important, right? So you intended to give a a senior man, but even though 
the senior man is not around, but we can use our wisdom. Then uh, if you offer a certain man to the temple, it's considered as a Sangha. So if you have a such a wisdom, then you will not have any suffering, a happiness. But of God, anyway, you don't like it, and you, you feel unhappy because you, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't get the chance to offer senior monks. That is, maybe you have a certain degree of craving, craving, craving for offering to the senior monks. But of course, we can choose with the wisdom. We can choose the receiver with the wisdom, but we have to use our wisdom, our own, uh, honestly, uh, you can choose the receiver with your wisdom. So uh, based on your wisdom, you choose receiver. And if you have a wisdom, then there will be no, no uh, happiness, happiness. Yeah, you're right, you're right. You may have a good intention doing a merit uh, to do a good offering. So I'm looking at this Meritorious Pollution Foundation actually uh, generates uh, eight wholesome chickens. Yeah. But if a person is in a disliked situation in a mild moment, demeritorious. De 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 so de I would think it will go down to the demeritorious. But actually here, I think we <laughs> as, as you are a BDMA students, you know that the mind is very quick. The Buddha said that uh, there's no simile, there's no example to, to explain, you know, the speed of the mind. So the speed of the mind, that means if you have a way, dislike, you will not offer. You will, you will bring you are, your rope, bring back home. <laughs> I mean, the more support you, you want to offer the senior man. So that is because of generosity, you know? Hosan, uh, one of the, ho a great Hosan Chaita, right? But when you arrive at the Tambe, so he went out. But you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you, 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 you hate it. You don't want to offer to the junior monks, junior monks. That is dislike or dosa. Then later you decided that, oh, I should give, whether junior or senior. That is generosity again. So that state of mind, uh, one of the whole great, uh, you, you offer, the moment you offer the rope, that is, you do it with one of the eight great horse and cheda. But before you do that, there is a Hosan Cheda. If a Hosan Cheda dislike an Ewe uh, continuously arising in your mind, you will not offer. You will not offer. So the moment you offer the rope, Hosan Cheda. Hosan Cheda. But that Hosan Maritoria Cheda. Uh, how to say is the image, you know, craving and ignorance. Actually, the mind is very quick, you know, the mind is very quick. Then you bring the food, then you want to offer to the senior man. But it's not here. Uh, the desire to offer, that's generosity. But here, you just see junior man. But you don't want to offer, that is a because of hatred or maybe then Agudala Cheda arises. Then later you decided to offer anyway. That is because of generosity. Right? So the mind very quick. Hosan Cheda and Hosan Cheda, Hosan Cheda. Actually in the fifth chapter, in the fifth chapter we learn Okata, right? Okata and Omaka. Oktami, uh, you do good deed. Uh, how do you say? You do when you do good deed. Before you do good deed, Hosan Cheda. Then after you do good deed, Hosan Cheda. You know, Hosan Cheda. That that is called Okata. 
superior one, superior dharma, superior sila, superior bhavana. But sometimes you do good deed, uh, or before you do good deed, I will send chaita. Then after you do good deed, I will send chaita. It's called omaka, inferior, inferior one, inferior one. Okay. Any more question? Okay, let's go next one. Let's study next one. Consciousness. <clears throat> With the relation of formations as condition, consciousness come to be. Consciousness come to be. Because of relation of formations, consciousness arises. I think this is very complicated one. This this play is very complicated. I think you need to understand very clearly. Otherwise, the, this one is very the most complicated place in dependent originations. So in the soda, the Buddha said that because consciousness is reckoned by the particular condition dependent upon which it arises. Normally when we study dependent originations, uh, many people use Vijnana as a rebut linking consciousness. Rebut linking consciousness. It is not 100% correct. So we just simply use Vijnana. Vijnana consciousness. The Buddha said that uh, consciousness is reckoned by the particular condition depending upon which it arises. When consciousness arises, depending on the I and the form, it is called I consciousness. It is not a rebelling in consciousness. It is I consciousness. Because consciousness arises, depending on the I. So when consciousness arises, depending on the ear, it's called ear consciousness. Nose, nose consciousness. Ten, ten consciousness. Body, body consciousness. If the consciousness arises dependent upon the mind, a mind object, it is reckoned as a mind consciousness. Mind consciousness. So you think something with your mind. You know, the consciousness arises. So such consciousness is called mind consciousness because it arises depending on the mind so if we say here if we use just rebutting in consciousness it's not correct so we have a eight type of consciousness i'm consciousness ear nose turn the body and mind consciousness but of course, rebirth linking consciousness is a one of the mind, mind consciousness. Volition of formations, sankhara, generate one of the 90 type of rebirth linking consciousness at the time of conception, at the time of conception in the mother's womb, or sometimes as the devas and brahma, the they conceive at once. So in those time, so volition of formation, in other words, karma generate rebirth linking consciousness. So we have a 90 rebirth linking consciousness. You do good and bad in this life, according to your karma, you will have a rebirth linking consciousness. But during the course of existence, then after you have a rebirth in a new life, then there will be cause of existence. So during the course of existence, other karmas generate 32 mundane resident chaitas. But here, 32. Actually, we have learned in the, the first chapter, so we have a 32 mundane resident chaitas. 20, uh, 32 Vipaka Chaita. 
at the time of conception, but this and the, the 90 type of chain arises. And at the course of the existence, 32, 32. So that is consciousness. Actually, uh, in our mind, so we have to remember that we are learning Dibbana origination. So Dibbana origination talk about the original suffering, the original suffering. Maka Cheda is Hosan Cheda. It's not an original suffering. Maka Cheda, cessation of suffering. And Phala Cheda, Phala Cheda in Abhidhamma, Rasada, right? For Rasada and Cheda, it's not the original suffering. For that reason, we don't have to take it. But here, because of karma, because of sankhara, consciousness arises. Here, consciousness me at the time of conception, 90. So during the course of existence, in, uh, after, after rebirth, rebirth living consciousness, there is a, the cause of existence until you die. So during that moment, 32 resident chaitas. So gamma conditions 32 resident chaitas. Actually, they're talking about ultimate reality. We are talking about according to a Vedama, according to a Vedama. But if you just say, if you just think very simply, very simply, gamma, your action, condition, consciousness. So that consciousness may be good and bad, in a simple way, according to the soda. According to the soda. You got, you, you, you understand? Okay. Because after doing wholesome deed, you have a wholesome rebelling consciousness at the time of conception. If you do an wholesome deed, an wholesome karma, you will have a unwholesome rebelling in consciousness. So we have a 90 type of rebelling in consciousness. It'll be one of them, one of them, at the time of conception. But after that, after rebirth, linking consciousness, the cause of existence, until you die, you know? So during that period, 32 mundane resident chaitas. So because of Hosan Cheda, we have a resident Cheda, right? Resident Cheda. But as we are learning the original suffering, forget about Maga and Fala Cheda. Only Monday, resident Cheda arises. Here, regarding with the rebirth linking consciousness, Pati Sandi Vijnana. So the first consciousness in a new existence is called Pati Sandi Vijnana, rebirth linking consciousness or relinking consciousness. It is so called because it links together the new existence with the previous one. It link actually is it just matter form matter form it doesn't link if the chudi cheda cease stop then another cheda arises it look like it link to two existence for that, for that reason it's called but this and rebut linking So I want to call the uh, consciousness in a new existence or rebuttling in consciousness in a new existence. The Buddha said in uh, Mahanirana Soda, if consciousness, vijnana, were not descend into the mother's womb, would mind and matter, nama rupa, take shape in the, in the mother's womb? No. If Actually, the consciousness of Arahan, the consciousness of the Bodha and Pichika Bodha. So there's no karma, no Sankara. Because of that, the consciousness do not establish anywhere. 
the consciousness will not go to mother's womb or anywhere. So for that reason, for them, there's no rebirth. There's no rebirth. If there's no rebirth, no old age, no sickness, no death. It is called amata, deathless. Amata, deathless. But here, the Buddha said, if consciousness descends into the mother's womb, there will be mind and matter. Nama rupa, nama rupa. The next one, uh, Dutiya Chidana Soda in Sauda Nikaya, the Buddha said that when consciousness is established and has come to growth, there is a decent of mind and matter, mental and material phenomena. That means if consciousness established, consciousness arises in the new existence, then because of consciousness, the mind and matter grow. That means the mind and matter arises. Actually, we are talking about at the moment of conception, at the mother's womb. But in the normal, normal, you know, during the course of existence, after you have a river consciousness, so there are many consciousness arises. Because of that conscious, those consciousness, the mind and matter arises. I think later I will explain that one. So because of that in uh, dependent originations, with the consciousness as condition, mind and matter, nama rupa, come to be. Nama, du nama rupa arises. But here, mind me, and then uh, Sanda Nikaya, so mind me feeling, perception, volition, contact, attention, attention. Actually here, don't forget that the Buddha just, the Buddha just talk, important uh, chedasikas, important chedasikas, because they are important uh, for the arising of the mind. So you might think that here Valesian Chedana already taken in the uh, uh, as a Sankara under Sankara. But here we shouldn't we shouldn't take Valesian or Chedana. You shouldn't think like this. And also when we study Dibana originations, uh, we need to keep our mind because of ignorance, Sankara arises. Actually Sankara arises not just because of ignorance. So the Buddha gave a very important uh, cause, you know? very important conditions. So there are many other conditions for the rising of Sankara. Not only ignorance, but also craving as well. But also hatred as well. Because of hatred, we do our action. Because of loba, we do our actions. We are here in Dibana Originations, that is the teaching method. So the, out of many, many reasons, many, many causes, many conditions, the Buddha just show important part, important part. So I think if you do not know this one, you know, you, uh, uh, it's very hard to understand. But here, you can think that um, when we talk about Nama, feeling, perception, volition, contact, attention. But here, feeling, that will be shown later. But here, already taken. And also, volition, volition is already taken by Sankara, but here also taken again. So I think it's very complicated. So, something happened because of, something happened because of something. Normally we understand in a simple way. Actually something has been not because of one condition or one cause. It may be many causes, many causes. But here, mind and matter, 
because of consciousness, nama rupa arises. Be a mind, feeling, perception, volition, contact, attention. The matter, the four great elements, and the form derive from them. Derive from them. So actually, uh, when you look at the sodas, the Buddha just explain with a general term. General term. The Buddha do not explain specifically. But Abhidharma is very concise where we tear in specific uh, terms, you know. But here, because of consciousness, Nama Rupa arises. Here, consciousness, uh, because of Sankara, consciousness arises. So in the, the in the um, so in this context, because of consciousness. Nama Rupa arises. In this context, consciousness refers to not only 32 resident chaitas, but also it refers to 29 volitional formation chaita as well. But yeah, and very, now it's very, very complicated. <laughs> if we study a bit, it's very complicated. But we sometimes we need to understand in a simple way, but of course, if you understand according to Abhidharma, it's also good. But here, according to Abhidharma, consciousness here means not, on, not only 32 resident chaitas, but also 29 volitional formations, wholesome and unwholesome chaitas. Earlier when, so because of Sankara, Vijnana arises. So in that context, Vijnana is only 32 resident chaitas. But here, because of consciousness, Nama Rupa arises. In this context, in this particular context, consciousness, not only 32 resident chaitas, but also 29 volitional formation chaitas. Okay. I think uh, if you see this way, and you have a better understanding. Here, nama rupa. When we talk about nama rupa, nama is mind or mental phenomena. Sometimes people body use mentality and matter or rupa materiality or material phenomena. But here, because of vijnana, because of vijnana, consciousness, mind and matter arises. So all the vijnana are taken by the word vijnana. Then when we talk about nama here, nama, so we have to take only Chitta Sika. 52, uh, 50, 52 mental factor, mental factors. Because, um, because of Vijnana, because of 89 Chitta, sorry, uh, 81 Chitta, 81 Chitta, because of 81 Chitta, 81 mundane Chitta, then uh, 52 mental factor arises. Because of Vijnana, Nama, mind arises. Here, even though I'm trans uh, we translate the mind, it means mental factor according to Vedama. But of course, if we, uh, if we think very simple way, because of consciousness, the mind arises. The mind can be anything, no? Mental phenomena. It can be uh, consciousness, it can be a uh, mental factor. But uh, Abhidhamma want to define precisely. For that reason, according to Abhidhamma, because of consciousness, mental factor arises. 52 mental factor arises. Because of consciousness, because of consciousness, 
But here, consciousness is mundane consciousness, not a supra-mundane one. So when we study dependent origination, forget about uh, supra-mundane consciousness. But of course, when we study cessation formula, cessation formula, supra-mundane consciousness will come in. But here, uh, matter me according to Vidyama, 28 matters. 28 matters. Because of consciousness, and uh, 52 mental factor arises. Because of consciousness, 28 matters arises. If we talk about uh, in precise way, precise way, here, matter me at the time of conception. So when we have a rebirth in the new existence, the matter born or came up. The matter born or came up. Because in previous, in previous life, you have done good and bad karma. So as a result of good and bad karma, you will have uh, the material phenomena in the new life. That is, that is called Kamacha Rupa. The matters born not karma. But during the cause of existence, the matters born or chayda. Wherever you have any state of consciousness in your mind, the matter born or chayda will arise. Will arise. But even though here, even though we use the matter born or chayda, even though we use only the word chayda, it doesn't mean chayda in Vidyama. Chaita here me, both Chaita and Chaita Sika. You understand? I think it's very, uh, Abhidharma trying to distinguish between Chaita and Chaita Sika. But in the Sotas, even Abhidharma is safe, sometimes when we talk about Chaita, it doesn't mean just Chaita. It is both Chaita and Chaita Sika. But here, some material phenomena arises because of chaita, chaita is a rupa. So that me, that chaita me not purely eighty nine chaita. It is chaita sika as well. It's combination of two, you know. Because uh, at the beginning of uh, chaita sika, uh, the writer of Minyo Bidama, and he said that. Uh, when Chaita arises, Chaita Sika also will arise together. This is together. That means they are the same. For convenience sake, Abhidharma trying to explain two, you know. Actually, they are no different, no different. For that reason, uh, because of Vijnana, Nama Rupa, right? Nama Rupa. So, according to Abhidharma, consciousness here means not only 32 resident Chaita, but also 29 Kusala and Akusala Chaita. So, because of those resident Chaita, Hosan and Anhosan Chaita, then uh, the mind and matter arises. But here, the mind me means the factor, according to Abhidharma, means the factor. And the matter me is, uh, the matter is very clear, rupa is 29, 29 rupas, 29 rupas. Complicated, right? Question, any more question? I think understanding Dependent origination, simple way and sophi sophisticated way. <laughs> sophisticated. I, I don't want to use complicated. <laughs> sophisticated and profound way. Profound way. So according to Soda, it's very clear because of Vijnana, Nama, Rupa. Even Vijnana itself can be Nama. Nama, Nama. 
sometimes uh, when we study Patana, so because of Vijnana, Vijnana arises. Because of Chitasika, Chitasika arises, like this, you know? It's a, uh, how to say, um, it's a causal relationship, causal relationship. But here, okay, as we are learning a Bidama, we will study according to a Bidama. Because of consciousness, Nama Rupa arises. So in this context, Vijnana hear me, 32 resident traders, as well as 20, uh, 29 Kusala Hosan and Hosan Chaita. So because of those Vijnana, Nama Rupa arises. Here, Nama me, 52 mental factors. Rupa me, 29 Rupas, 29 Rupas. <clears throat> suppose at the time of conception, suppose as a human being, you were born in a new life, as a human being, mother's womb. So according to Rupa, uh, Rupa session, uh, 30 type of material phenomena arises at that moment. And uh, body decays, body right? Body decays. And uh, uh, heart based decays, heart based decays, and also sexual decays. So, all together, 30. So, they are material phenomena, born of karma. Because of karma that you have done in the past life, you have those material phenomena, those matters. But, of course, during the time of existence, uh, material phenomena arises gradually, you know, gradually. But here, uh, because of Vijnana, Nama Rupa arises. So we have to understand in this way, for the immaterial realms, Arupa Loka, immaterial realm, Arupa Loka, there's no Rupa, there's no Rupa, just the mind. So in for the material realms, the consciousness conditions only the mind or nama. Only the mind, nama, not rupa. Because there's no rupa in the immaterial realm. For the non percipient realm, asinya sata, the consciousness conditions only the matter. Because non percipient realm, there is no mind, just matter, rupa. For that reason, if somebody attains the fit jhana in the human realm, so the fit jhana consciousness condition the matters, the body in the Brahma realm. So for that reason, uh, consciousness condition the rupa for the non percipient realm. For the sin sphere realms and the five material realms, the consciousness condition both mind and matter, both nama rupa. Because as a human realm and five material realms, they have a rupa as well as the mind. Consciousness condition sometimes just pure rupa, sometimes pure mind, sometimes both nama and rupa. In the for the in the immaterial realm, the consciousness condition only the mind. For asinya sata non percipient realm, the consciousness conditions. Because of consciousness, only the rupa arises, not the mind. For since we are realms, karma loka and five material realms, only consciousness uh, consciousness condition both nama rupa. So we have to understand in such a way. 
Any question? Okay. Here also, I mean, the, uh, you know, the language confused, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand you, your question. Consciousness hear me vinyana. Consciousness hear me vinyana. Uh, but we, in the Vedama, we learn 89 consciousness. 89 consciousness. But we call it cheta. We call it cheta. Cheta and consciousness, they are the same. They are the same in Abhidharma. But uh, we have the function of the mind, fun function of consciousness. They are called Chitasika. Chitasika. So both Chaita and Chitasika, they can be called the mind. They can be called the mind. But even in the sodas, even the sodas, Chitasika refer not only mental factor but also the consciousness. So here, actually, we have to distinguish between what I mean here, the mind me. Of course, according to Bidama, there is a mental factor. But here, the mind me, it covers consciousness as well as mental factor. Mental factor. You got that, uh, it's getting complicated, right? Yeah, yeah. The mind can be uh, consciousness as well as mental factor, the mind. No? So when I, when I say the mind, it means Cheta and Chetasika. Cheta and Chetasika. But if I say consciousness, it refers to Chaita. If I say Chaitasika, it refers to mental factor. If I say the mind, that means both Chaita and Chaitasika. But here, of course, it's confusing. Here, uh, here uh, Nama, according to Bhidhamma, just mental factor. 52 mental factor, not the Chaita. Here, 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 yeah. So actually, Nama, Nama, according to Abhidharma, Nama can be Chaita, Chaitasika, Nibbana as well. So it's very, yeah, I, I mean, it's very confusing, very confusing. Nama, Nama, not, not part of the mind. Nibbana also called Nama in Abhidharma. Not the mind. Nibbana is not in mind. It is uh, the object or the mind. Huh? The object or the mind. So if you have Maga and Falacheda, you can experience Nibbana. Yeah. Yeah, it's very com uh, complicated. It's really the term, no? the term. Uh, when you're feeling your consciousness, let's say when you feel angry, mm. do you feel angry without consciousness? Uh, here, um, did you finish your study in uh, the first chapter? The first chapter in uh, Manual of Vida? Not, not finished yet, right? Hmm? Have you finished? Oh, you are from Sanshin. Uh, Sentient class from another another bit of my class, right? Or I think uh, later I think you were you were you were very clear uh, when you finish uh, the first and second chapter. So I think now uh, I understand that for you it was very difficult because uh, we are talking about thirty two resident chaita twenty nine. Uh, functioned uh, volitional camera like this. If you do not understand, don't worry, because um, 
only for those who study the first and second lessons, uh, sorry, the first and second chapter, you will understand this one. Maybe uh, for you, a bit difficult to understand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any question? Okay, no question, then let's continue. The number five link, the number five, six sin species, Salayadana, depend on the mind and body, the six sin species arise. Depend on the mind and body, so here, the mind and matter, Sorry, not the body, mind and matter. The six sense bases arise. Here, the bases, ayatana, are the physical seat or physical object depending on which the mind arises. We have a six. I'm, I'm base. So we have a eye sensitivity, it's called eye base. So based on eye sensitivity, consciousness arises. Sorry, uh, how do you say the because because we have a uh, the mind and the matter, we have a eye sensitivity. If you do not have uh, if you do not have uh, the mind and the matter, you will not have eye sensitivity. Then you have a ear sensitivity, ear base, nose base, tan base, body base, and heart base, or the base of the mind, the base of the mind. So these are called six bases, six bases. So because um, you have the mind and the matter. Because of that, you have these six sense bases. Suppose, um, before you die, you practice mindfulness and wisdom. So you, uh, wherever you feel, you don't have any craving, any ignorance. You practice mindfulness and clear comprehension until you die. You don't have a craving and ignorance. So if you, have, if, if you don't have a craving and ignorance, the less consciousness in this life, we call it chudicheta. The less consciousness in this life, there is no footing to establish a new life. So that means the chudicheta, the less consciousness in this life, where extinguish. Then after that, no more consciousness at all. Because you don't have a craving and ignorance. If you don't have a consciousness, if there's no consciousness, there's no mind and the matter. If there's no mind and matter, there will be no six things basis. If there's no six sense basis, no contact. No contact, no feeling. No feeling, no craving. No craving, no clinging. No clinging, no path. No existence. If there's no existence, no path. No path, no aging and death. If there's no aging and death, no sorrow, lamentation, this is the end of suffering. Right? That is cessation formula of dependent origination. So what I want to say here is, um, because we have uh, consciousness arises in a new life, because of that, the mind and matter arises. Because of those mind and matter, we have a six sense basis. I'm base, ear base, nose base, time base, body base, and heart base. For that reason, uh, in the Soda, the Buddha said that the all. The Buddha said that, Bekut, I will teach you the all. Everything. It cover everything. Listen to that. And the Buddha said, and what Bekut is the all, the I and form, 
the ear and the song, the nose and the odor, the tan and taste, the body and tactile object, and the mind and mental phenomena. This is called the all. Other than that, nothing, nothing. No, what I want to say is, so these six things basically are very important, very important. So we have to practice mindfulness based on these six sin species. Not all six sin species arise in all realms, in all realms. But in sin sphere realms, karma loka, all the six sin species can arise. Human realm, heavenly realm, Then only I'm based, ear based, and mind based arise in the five material realms. In the Rupa Loka, only I'm based, ear based, and mind based arises. So there is no nose based, and time based, and body based. Because we, we, we talk about the uh, because of Nama Rupa, six sin species arises. Because, because of Nama Rupa, sometimes in, when in, uh, in the Rupa realm, only three bases can arise. I'm base, ear base, and mind base. And the mind base alone arises in immaterial realms. Immaterial realms. For immaterial Brahma, Brahmas, only mind base arises. The other bases, no. At that at that moment. So we have to understand in such a way. Question? No question. Okay. Next one. Contact. Contact. Fast up. So as we have six sense bases, when you see something with your eye, when you hear something with your ear, when you smell something with your nose, when you taste something with your tongue, when you touch something with your body, when you think something with your mind, contact will arise. Because of that, Depend on the six sin species, contact arises. So the contact arises depend on both six six internal sin species and the six external sin species. Eye, ear, nose, turn, the body, the mind that is internal. Form, songs, taste, touch, smell, the mind object. So these are external or external pieces. Depend on eye and the forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is called contact. That is a very simple explanation. Eye sensitivity and form visible form because of that eye consciousness. The meaning of the three is called contact. So according to Vipanga Soda, we have a six classes of contact. And what Paiku is contact? So there are six classes of contact. Eye contact, ear contact, nose, tongue, body, mind contact. Very, very easy, right? Very easy. Contact, according to Vidyama, this is a mental factor. Uh, contact, how many, with how many chaita, contact associate with? How many chaita, contact associate with? Huh? 80? 32. Contact. Contact is a universal mental factor. Universal one. Huh? No. Oh, no. <laughs> contact. 
all, <laughs> all 89 shader, you know, contact associated with 89 shader. But now we are talking about the original suffering, so that means only mundane, eight, uh, mundane shader, you know, mundane shader. Contact. So what I want to say is, uh, we will seek contact, says contact. Depending on contact, feeling arises. If you were feeling, sorry, if you were contact, feeling will arise. Feeling experience the object. It is not a emotional aspect of the mind. When I say feeling, it's not emotional aspect. It is just sensation or experience when uh, which arises in contact with the pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral experiences. Sometimes will be pleasant experience, sometimes unpleasant experience, sometimes neutral. So when you have a contact with the object, there will be experience or sensation. It's not an emotional aspect. With the arising of contact, feeling or sensation simultaneously arise. If there is a contact, when your body contact with something, feeling will arise. The feeling can be pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. When you hear something, contact. Then after contact, feeling will arise. It can be pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. It cannot be stopped by any power or any force or any supernatural being. Nobody can stop. If you have a contact with the something, feeling will arise. Sensation will arise. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Sometimes you train. So we have a six classes of feeling according to Vipanga Sota. Feeling born of eye contact. If you have eye contact with something, sometimes pleasant feeling, sometimes unpleasant feeling, sometimes neutral. So that is called feeling born of eye contact. And also we have a feeling born of ear contact, born of nose contact, born of tongue contact, body and mind contact. So we have a six classes. Actually, this is a very simple classification. Any type of feeling, whatever feeling arises, then we have to be very mindful. And we have a three type of feeling. In terms of sensation, each feeling is subdivided into three. Number one, pleasant feeling, Sukha Vedana, painful feeling, unpleasant feeling. Vietnam, and neither painful nor pleasant feeling, neutral feelings, three feelings. In terms of faculty, so we have a five type of feeling. Feeling caused by physical pleasure, feeling caused by physical pain, Dukkha Vietnam, pleasant feeling in the mind, unpleasant feeling in the mind, neutral feeling in the mind. That is the, uh, in terms of faculty, we have five type of feeling. Feeling, how many chaita does feeling associate with? How, oh yeah, because the feeling is the universal. For that reason, if there is a contact, definitely feeling will arise. You cannot control feeling. But you can control craving. You cannot control feeling. 
right? You can you can control your craving, your emotion. Actually, craving is your emotion aspect. The next one is the craving. With the feeling, Vedana as condition, craving comes to be. Because of feeling, craving arises. Craving is like a super gloom. It grabs the object family. Attachment, longing, greed, lust are some of its name. It is the original suffering in the first salmon. It is the original suffering, the original sansara, the original problem. That is just like a, the red color change, red color change. It represents sansara or suffering, a lot of suffering, you know, different type of suffering. If you can break that change, if you can break craving, you can break the change of suffering or the change of samsara. But here, the most important part here, if you want to break all your problem, we have to remove self-craving. If you want to break all your suffering, the remove craving. If you want to break samsara, remove craving. Craving is the most important part. That is the chain. If you can break red color chain, you can break the link between many, many suffering. For that reason, in the first sermon, the Buddha said that uh, it is the remainder fading away and cessation of that same craving. It is called cessation of suffering. But here, cessation of suffering me, nothing but total cessation of craving. So if you can remove craving, that is cessation of suffering. If you can remove craving a little bit, you will have less suffering, a little bit. If you can remove craving a lot, you can reduce the amount of suffering a lot. If you can remove it once and for all, then you remove suffering once and for all. So that is the, I think for that reason, we need to understand what is craving. If you understand, you will know the method, how to do it. The way to cessation of suffering is nothing but the noble evil path. You don't need to do anything, just follow the noble evil path. If you practice the noble evil path, you are on the way to cessation of suffering. All your suffering will cease. For those who want to know the noble evil path, then you can come to soda study class. <laughs> soda study class, you know. Because we will study in detail what is uh, the noble evil path with the reference with many sultans. <clears throat> the problem is whether we want to follow or not. You, uh, you can study, but it uh, depends on our you know, desire, whether you, we, uh, we want to follow or we don't want to follow. We Banga Soda, the Buddha talk about six type of craving in terms of object. Craving for forms, when you see something, you crave for it. Craving for sounds, you want to hear something. Craving for odors. Craving for taste. Craving for tactile objects. And craving for mental, mind object, mental phenomena. So that is six type of craving, very easy, but when we study three type of craving, it's a little bit difficult. You see, mentioned in the first sermon, 
in terms of motor occurrence, how it occurs. So we have a three type of suffering. Number one, craving for sensual pleasures that come through six sense bases. Sensual pleasure means something that is connected with the senses. You crave for, you have a craving to see, craving for hear, no? For taste, craving for smell, craving for touch. That is the craving for sensual pleasures. That is connected with the senses. Kamatana. The second one, craving for existence praying for existence. People are uh, here existence. But what now? Uh, we have a 31 planes of existence. If you have a craving for those existence, that is also craving. You have craving for existence in the family that's also craving you have craving for in a uh, say, craving for existence in a place that's also craving many type of craving no some people crave for existence or popularity that's also craving Existence of fame, craving. That's also craving. Many type of craving. So some craving are wholesome, some are unwholesome. If you crave for unwholesome wine, we'll go to unwholesome destinations. If you crave for wholesome wine, we'll, crave, uh, we'll go to a good destination. But here, craving for existence, craving with eternity view, that assume that the same object one is experiencing to be lasting, unchanging, and eternal. But here, I will normally uh, we can understand craving or craving for existence with a pleasant feeling. Pleasant feeling. So if you have a pleasant experience in your life, you crave for it. You want existence or that pleasant feeling. That is craving for existence. So you have a pleasant conditions in your life. You crave for it. That is craving for existence. Existence of that pleasant condition in your family, in your job, or in your country, wherever, wherever. If the object is pleasant, you crave for it, craving for existence of that object. Actually, every object is subject to impermanence. If those objects change, those feeling change, then you suffer, you suffer. Because of that, craving is the original suffering. In our life, we have a pleasant experience, a pleasant condition, a good condition. Your life is going well, then you crave for it. You want it, existence of that, a good condition. Craving, you know? It's quite normal, it's quite normal, but if you do not have if you do not have a wisdom, understanding, then you will have suffering. Those craving is the original suffering. But for those who are who have learned the Dharma, who apply the Dharma in their daily life, they know that pleasant experience in our life a good condition in our life, a family, in a job, any places. 
they are subject to change, impermanent. If you really understand impermanent nature of feeling or condition in our life, if the impermanent nature arises, occurs in our life, we are not suffering. Because we know that impermanent, impermanent, we fully accept it because of that even though changes come in in our life, wisdom predominant. If the wisdom predominant in our life, there's no place for ignorance. If there's no ignorance, no craving. No craving, no suffering, no suffering. Your mind is liberated from craving. That's liberation. That's liberation. So eternity view me, you want that. That happen, 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 happen to forever. <laughs> that is the wrong view, no? That is the wrong view. Everything arises subject to disappear. That is the, the nature. Another one is craving for existence. So another, one, another example, I will give you another example. Craving for existence. So actually we want, we want existence of the people who we love. You have existence of your parents, your children, your husband, your wife, your friends. If you crave for it, craving for existence. Craving for existence. Existence of that passing. Everything is subject to change. It's impermanent. One time, one day, that person will leave from your life. And you feel suffer. You have a lot of suffering in your life. Because you have a craving for existence of that person. Then you have a wisdom, understanding that everything is impermanent. Then you are associating with beloved one. Then you understand the nature of impermanence. One day, that person will disappear from your life. Then you understand impermanent nature of life. Then because of that wisdom, even though that person disappear from your life, no suffering at all. Because no craving, no craving. Wisdom or understanding predominant at that moment. If wisdom is there, no ignorance. No ignorance, no craving. No craving, no suffering. Just accept it. Your mind is very light, not heavy. Your mind is liberated from craving. Liberation, liberation. Freedom from craving. Next one is the craving for non-existence. Non-existence. Craving for non-existence. Because of hatred because of hatred. You don't like it. Unpleasant feeling arises in your body. Unpleasant feeling arises in your mind. You don't want it, you hate it. You crave for non-existence of that unpleasant feeling. That is another type of craving. So the Buddha clearly said that if Unpleasant feeling arises in your body, in your mind. Unpleasant experience arises in your life. Just understand very clearly. Unpleasant experience arises in your life. Unpleasant problem arises in your life. Understanding unpleasant experience as the unpleasant experience, that is wisdom. That is wisdom then you're very mindful. If the wisdom arises at that moment, there's no ignorance. If there's no ignorance, no craving. No craving, no suffering. No suffering. Suppose you are living someone who you don't like very much. You don't like that person. 
that you create for non existence of that passing. Craving, no? Craving. Non existence of that passing. Craving. So, because of that craving, whenever you see that passing, whenever you hear the sound of that passing, suffering in your mind. That suffering arises because of craving for non existence. You have a problem in your life. Whenever you think about that problem, you hate it. You don't like it much. You don't like it so much. Then you crave for non existence of that person, uh, that problem. That problem. So, because of craving for non existence of that problem, then you, you're suffering. You're suffering thinking about that problem. But according to the Buddha, a problem in our life arises. You just know that a problem in your life as a problem. That is wisdom. That is wisdom. And you're very mindful, sati. If the wisdom and sati arises in your mind, you will be able to solve those problems calmly. Normally, we cannot solve the problem in proper way, but the reason is we have a lot of hatred, we have a lot of delusion, we have a lot of greed. Because of that, we cannot solve the problem. So, as you, as you do not see the problem as a problem, then that is ignorance, ignorance, more a wager, a wager. So, then you are not mindful because of that craving arises. Craving hear me, Aida, Loba, and Dosa. So because of that craving, then a lot of problem arises. Whenever you solve those problems, you cannot see objectively. You cannot see them objectively. Then you decide and you act based on your Loba, Dosa, Moha. Then those Loba, Dosa, Moha will generate suffering. When you are angry, you will react with anger, shouting, you know, complaining. When you are greedy, you will, uh, when you are greedy, you will decide something based on your greed. Then your decision will go wrong. So, if you are mindful, the problem as a problem, then you are very mindful. You clearly see the problem as a problem. That's a wisdom. Based on mindfulness and wisdom, then you solve the problem. So as you, based on sati and wisdom, then you are, you are reaction will be right. Because of that, there's no ignorance and no craving. For that reason, even though things may happen in a bad way, the result may not be good, but you do not suffer, you do not suffer. Because you don't have a craving for it. You don't have a craving. So actually here is very important. Um, a wager, a wager is moha. Not knowing suffering as a suffering. Not knowing the problem as a problem. Not knowing anger as a anger. Not knowing Ahosandi as a Ahosandi. Not knowing. Moha. But here, Tanna or craving, two type. Sometimes craving arises because of hatred. Sometimes craving arises because of loba. Altogether, three root, right? Loba, dosa, moha are the root of Ahosandi. We have learned in the, in, in the first chapter. The first chapter. Quite clear. I mean, when when we learn in divine originations, the most important part is uh, because of feeling, craving arises. Feeling here means experiences. Because of experiences, with your eye, with your ear, nose, tongue, the body, the mind, 
the experiences may be pleasant, sometimes unpleasant, neutral. Unpleasant things, we react with the hatred. Pleasant things, we react with the love. Neutral, we react with the ignorance, moha. So these lower doors the moha are the root of all evil. But in the divine originations, uh, ignorance and craving are the, the, the hat of, we call it hat, the hat of all problem. problem. Any question? One question? Okay, no more questions, then let's close the lessons. close one week because the YMBA is for them for them okay thank you no class for next week <laughs>